Welcome back to the Tide to Your Hanger. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for September 27th, 2020. 2020. What a big week going on. We had the Hasbro PulseCon thing going on. Lots of announcements. A lot of things happening. Actually, we do have some stuff going on in the Masterpiece Realm. Also, we also have more things in statues. We've got more stuff going on with some upgrade kits. Let's talk about all this stuff. Coming up. So the first thing I want to talk about is Takara's Starscream. We've got more pictures, and these are actual pictures of prototype. I believe they're not just renders. They look like the real thing. You see the screws in there and all of that. I have to say Takara makes a good looking figure, and this is a definite upgrade to what we've seen in the past. A nice looking figure. The front, the head sculpt, the whole contour of it, the line work, it looks great. Looking at the back, the back is, it's clean enough. It's a bit of a backpack. Some people are going to find a lot of trouble with this backpack, but I don't think it's that bad. Showing the articulation with a kneel down and all that. And then here is the bottom side, which is exactly what you'd expect. Looking at this makes me think it's not going to be a ridiculously complex transformation. Then again, I could be wrong. And then there's a couple of features and functions with the opening cockpit. And then the, you can move the nose cone to the side like that. Definitely a good looking figure that... I sort of look forward to it. I don't look forward to the price though, so I don't know how much it's going to cost. And then this picture here, Jetfire would be jealous. Where are you at on these seekers? We got more pictures of Tigatron, so more Takara stuff going on. And of course, Takara's got a couple of things in the works and they're letting us see them, which is nice. Here is the packaging. Packaging looks good. It's what you'd expect. This is the picture I like the most about all the pictures that are showing up of this Tigatron is the group shot, so he's shorter than Dinobot, taller than, than good old Cheetor. We knew that from the get-go, but this shows a better perspective of everything. Here's a good shot of just him, and I, I like the colors, and I like that shiny metallic look that's going on with it. So it really does turn out pretty good. A couple of different shades of the white in there. I don't know if that's exactly what I would have wanted, but that's the way it is. Uh, looking at this here, now here's something that you're going to see is that there's kind of a changing expression. You can change his expressions on his face by flipping his eyes around and uh, flipping his mouth around, I guess. Uh, so maybe I need to find out exactly about that. But looking at it, that's a pretty cool feature. So we've got some early renders of the TFC Toys STC-02 Dominator Megatron. And the thing about this figure is that it is a triple changer. It is a crossover, a G.I. Joe crossover. I don't 100% see it though, but here it is with the tank mode, so I don't know what tank that's supposed to be, but he transforms into a tank. It's almost like a Megatron that's trying to be a Springer because you can also turn it into a helicopter, and so uh, there it is. Pretty interesting concept. It's an interesting Transformer. I'm guessing this might not really be a masterpiece. Uh, TFC Toys makes pretty small third-party figures. I don't know if they actually fit a masterpiece scale more of a chug, so there it is. So we've got a couple of statues. So Prime One Studio has their Megatron statue from one of those live action movies. But look how big this thing is. This thing is huge, it is massive, and he has a removable cloak that uh, well, just looks like it's a, a big old sheet that he's wearing. But anyway, that can be removed if you want to. Oh, they call it a swapple cape. So, you know, we've seen this before, we've seen some of it before, but they're putting out more pictures of it, a lot more pictures. And this is actual painted pictures in detail. You can see that it's kind of got that dirty dustiness to it instead of just a shiny look to it. So that's kind of what's going on with the statue. Now as for a different statue, they got this blackout statue. This one looks super clean, super shiny. I do like the look of this and I like the, the clean look more than like the dusty look of the other one. So, so if I was in on statues, I'd probably be in on more something like this. But the whole goal of statues is to make them look 100% realistic, exactly like they walked out of the screen. So let's get into some reveals about the kingdom. And we've already seen Cheetor, but this is an official reveal of Cheetor in both modes. He looks good. I feel like he's a pretty good looking figure. Uh, I don't know if I like the lower shins, but everything else looks pretty good on him. Again, we've already seen Black Arachnia, but here's Black Arachnia 
more proper like and this is official so looking at official pictures yep she does look good now for Cyclonus we haven't really seen Cyclonus so much a Cyclonus figure looks really good in here I like his uh, the aesthetic the face looks a little bit off but as for the rest of it he looks good it looks better than what they gave us in classics and it's smoother it's cleaner in both modes and I bet you the transformation feels a lot more solid I know the classics one had a problem where it felt kind of floppy in both modes but uh, the robot mode was good but the all mode was real floppy it never felt like you really finished the transformation it never stayed in there this one looks like it will next up we've got this leader class t-rex megatron and i got a few things to say about this guy first of all it's cool that they're doing them and leader class is not the same thing it used to be it's probably not going to be anywhere near the size of the original the first version that was out so don't get your heart set on that but looking at the face of the dino mode they went for a real world dino not the original version or the cartoon version so it's not cartoon accurate i feel like i wanted it more cartoon accurate i would have rather had that than going for a real looking t-rex uh i don't know i mean where are you stand on this one here we go with optimus primal yes he's going to be a voyager class optimus primal and so that puts him at well we'll talk about price here in a minute because these things are getting more expensive they're up in the ante on us but uh i think it looks pretty good so not bad and look at all of the extra faux fur i think that's even more uh than they did on their first one and the original one it's like more faux fur than we've seen on one of these figures before so this is called the deluxe class paleotrex and it's a dinosaur i i hear this is a weaponizer i still don't know as much about it like how it comes apart and how it's going to plug in and how a leg and an arm and stuff looks like a weapon but anyway this is a weaponizer kind of a cool idea i could sort of see you know shields and stuff out of it but but anyway that's this guy so we also got this core class vertebrae vertebrake 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 vertebreak so it's, i guess kind of like a bird kind of like that other one so uh definitely something different that they're going along trying to introduce something new for Beast Wars collectors, because I guess there's not enough Beast Wars characters to go around. Now, I do like this Deluxe Class Warpath. I think it looks really good. I mean, it better than what we've seen in the past. Uh, they did a pretty good one in Classics, though, but the tank mode wasn't good. This tank mode is good, so I really kind of like what they've done with this. I like the direction they're going, and I'm glad they didn't make this in their new core line. They kept it a Deluxe. That was a smart move. Speaking of the core line, this is a core Optimus Prime. So I don't know if any of y'all remember, but back in the day there was like a $6 line of figures and you could get yourself a, a, a Legions figure Optimus Prime. And, and then you could get a Deluxe, a, a Legends Optimus Prime, a Legion of Legends, a Deluxe, uh, a, a Voyager, and a Mastery. So they'd make an Optimus Prime in every single scale. They got away with that for a while. They got away from it. And I like that. Now they're getting back to it. Now I think they're getting back to it for this core class. And it's going to start making, of course, a whole slew of them in this class size that do transform. I think they're doing it to compete with third party, uh, the third party legends. And this is basically legends. It's not called legends, it's called core. And uh, we're going to talk about pricing a little bit. But that's interesting. They're bringing this kind of scale and size back. And that would you put this on your third party legend shelf? Is this prime good enough for you? Would it work for you? Or is it not as good? But for 10 bucks, I mean, there it is. All right, so we saw some official pictures. These are some more sort of official pictures, but a different way of taking them. And you get to see the different color breakup in the paint scheme of the Megatron in this one. The face sculpt is outstanding on the robot. Again, I'm not a fan of what they did with the Dinobot head, but that's just me. It does have kind of a hideaway gimmick with the uh, uh, the arm cannon kind of thing that goes on on the left arm for Megatron. But yeah, he looks pretty good overall, and I like his bot mode better than his dino mode. And then looking at uh, Optimal Optimus over here, hey, he looks good. I mean, what more could you say? So here's these fossilizers. So showing there's two different of these fossilizers 
and one is a deluxe and one is a core and they're different sizes and they're different they're going for different things uh, so anyway there they are this is kind of showing you the different size classes again you can see that we got the core optimus we have the deluxe uh, warpath and then we have voyager on this cyclonus and boy cyclonus looks smooth so now i want to talk to you about price hikes or price changes or adjustments and it's not huge it's not massive but there is a bit of a change coming to it so the core is on the left and that's going to be this rat traps in the core line and then they they're going to have a few other figures in the core line but uh, just like that Optimus Prime's in the core line. That's a $9.99 price point. Then next to it you see Cheetor Deluxe, like you're used to seeing the Deluxe figures and all of them across the spectrum there. They're going to be $22.99, so it's a $3 price increase from the $19.99 to the $22.99. And then the rest stay the same, which you see that this uh, Optimal Optimus is a Voyager scale and is $29.99. And then the leader at $50, bucks, like, uh, like the Megs, the Megatron Dino is going to be $50. With that weird looking dino head and so that's where we're at with the pricing on this so really we're adding a core for 10 bucks and we're getting a price increase on deluxe which i don't like because they sell more deluxe even though it seems like voyager is a scale they're targeting they sell more deluxe there's more deluxe figures releases so i guess that's where their money is made so looking into some studio series stuff which it's so strange they're calling a studio series even though it feels like it should be earthrise it's because 1986 movie and all of that it was a movie it's a studio series okay so this is scourge and scourge looks good scourge looks way better than anything that they've made in the past in the modern era just nowhere near as good cyclonus looks a bit better scourge looks way better now the wings are kind of odd to me but whatever looks great i like the way it's done i like this figure can't wait to see how it transforms and what it's all mode looks like some excellent pictures here from Ton Ton Reviews. And first off, I want to say that uh, Ton Ton Review did something to show you could, I guess, pull off the legs where they have the thigh swivel. They disconnect and then you could connect other parts of the fossilizer to it. I believe that's what he was doing. And that was just something like, kind of a proof of concept that we could do. And he was also kind of saying Rodimus is probably going to get it. Hot Rod's going to get an upgrade kit to Rodimus. Probably. That's just his thoughts and his impressions so uh great ideas coming out of that guy uh excellent but looking at this i really love this cup this cup looks really really good for a mainline release just blows my mind how good he looks i'm looking forward to it hot rod looks real good also i mean come on this is outstanding for a mainline release for the the 22.99 price point and then standing right next to the alicon which is still 22.99 for alicon isn't that bad uh was kind of wishing alicon be a bit bigger but maybe that scales properly and i'm just off but this all looks really good alt mode on cup is just killing it that is an outstanding looking alt mode on cup looks really good i like it i like everything about it this is kind of that play gimmick from the movie and that's why they did it this way but at the same time it just created a point of articulation and it's just genius like it's simplistically genius but I can see a lot of figures uh, showing up on second hand secondary market uh, missing a leg since they do detach sadly okay so this artwork has been picked apart and people are expecting this artwork to tell us the future of what releases that haven't been announced yet and I, I wouldn't be surprised at all so First off, there's a Titan class arc right in the middle of it. You see that right there? Transforming arc that answers the question what transforms the arc transforms. Does Teletran 1 transform? Probably. So uh, looking at that, that's something new that Hasbro hasn't done yet. That's a route they haven't gone down. The transforming arc gimmick. I don't know exactly how I feel about it. I think I would have rather had kind of the playset, but it is a transformer and mainline. And unless it's in the red series, it needs to transform, I guess, is the thought process. So there it is. But looking uh, at these other ones, there is a Beast Wars Scorponok in there. There's a Beast Wars a Polar Bear. I don't know what about Polar Bear. But a new G1 Gears. And if it looks more G1 than their last one, like, wow, a new G1 Gears. Uh, Friday, I didn't know this. So here we go. 
And then a new G1 Galvatron uh, that's probably going to look better than the last one they made. Uh, the Gator Fossilizer, so an Alligator Fossil. Then we've got Beast Wars Air Razor. I mean, there that's definitely an iconic figure character going on in there. Then there's a uh, Ractonite, so that that's another one. Sabertooth Fossilizer, that's that's the one that's uh, attacking Optimal Optimus. And, or on Optimal Optimus, so that's his armor, I guess. That's how it's supposed to work. Then there's a G1 Inferno, so, you know, it's just going crazy with all this stuff. There's also a, a Huffer, and, like, are we going to get a new Huffer? Like, wow, all this new stuff coming out. Beast Wars Waspinator, Trax, and an Ultra Magnus in Earth Mode. So I, I figured this, like, I didn't really care to get the Siege one, but I got a clearance one, so I was good. But I, I was like, they're going to make an Earth one. They're going to make this better and look more G1. I know they're going to, and... I'm sure it's coming. And then uh, Beast Wars Rhinox. Now, the Rhinox that they made in the 30th was good, so how much better could they make it? I'm interested in seeing this. So Wave 2 of the Red is announced, and Robot Enhanced Design. We get Cheetor, and we get a Prime version of RC. So Cheetor comes with a hyper-realized fur texture, uh, thickened his thighs, V-taper, so that he has a runner's physique, and he comes with an Energon Crystal Blaster and Blast Effect, removable chest plate to see his transformation cog sculpted inside, and it's it's kind of interesting how they're going with this, and I, I knew it, well, I didn't know it. Everyone else told me that they're going to go into other areas with this red line and kind of test the waters and see what's popular. Look, Let's see what this Prime RC has. She comes with uh, two forearm weapons. She also comes with two blaster weapons, and to energy effects, alternate trigger finger hands, and comes with a dark energon orb cube. So this is the next step, the next phase. They're dipping their toe into some more red, and I think this they look pretty good. So we're getting the Galactic Odyssey Collection um, Biosphera Autobot Clones 2-pack. So this Autobot Clones 2-pack is going to be different than the Takara release, which is the one that I picked up. And so it will be different also than the one that got included in the Walgreens set. So I knew this was coming since they did Wingspan and Pounce. And it doesn't surprise me that these are coming out. This is what they should have done in the first place. We should have got a proper set. And for a better price than I had to pay for my Takara import one. So lucky to everyone that waited. Sometimes it pays to wait. So we got more pictures of the Breakdown and the Jet Vehicon, which is getting a Generation Select, I believe it's a Generation Select issue. But anyway, we've got more pictures of them, so you see better shots of both modes and everything that comes with it in that box set. And there you go. But they're also doing a Megatron. So they say this is a reissue of the Voyager Prime Megatron. So, uh... If that's something you're in for, Prime at the 10 years, at 10 years of Prime, then this is a pretty cool line. A lot of people like the show, and getting this reissue, getting this stuff in people's hands, is probably something that's a good idea. I personally never got into the Prime toys and stuff, so so I really don't know all of the details about what didn't get released, what did get released, or what was hard to find. And so I, this thing looks semi-familiar to me, but I'm not 100% sure about it. But I know that so many people love Prime, it's going to do really well. So if you uh, watched my Friday video talking about Masterpiece options on a budget, this is one of my suggestions, is to get this Combiner Wars Devastator. But I didn't realize that the price had kind of shot up on them more than I thought, and they're getting a reissue. So this is getting reissued right now only in Australia on Amazon, but it's the understanding of the community that we're going to be getting this everywhere on Amazon. It's just for some reason Australia first, but it's a good figure for combined mode. I would not suggest this if you want them in, in the uh, the bot modes. The individual robot modes aren't that great. The alt modes are okay, but combined mode is where it is. It's an 18 inch tall figure. It's pretty beefy, big, and very, very G1-esque. So we got more, more pictures of Giga what? No, 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 Giga Watt. So Giga Watt here uh, looks different than the original promo shots. In fact, 
all of the people that were dropping six and seven hundred dollars on pre-orders for this thing uh for the walmart one which i guess this is going to be the walmart one that's coming they're going to be pleasantly surprised their money is definitely money well spent because the windshield doesn't look quite as bad as we all thought it would now you can still see the junk in the middle the junk behind it the hold it together but at the end of the day they did put some more tint to that windshield than they originally said they would and it does look better it does look marginally better definitely an improvement nice looking toy and you know i like deloreans i like the gold wing design i definitely like the time machine so uh, i look forward to getting this on hasbro pulse eventually more pictures are showing up of this volcanicus this is the uh, version that Takara is giving us versus what we already got and this is the difference in the paint scheme and and the difference in the feet and the difference in the hands and then the addition of I guess two big swords that's going to be put on his back and all of that great stuff but I do like the extra gold paint that it gets that extra premium treatment that it's got so I do like that aspect a lot better I've never seen mine in this mode I never planned to see mine in this mode but I figured I'd show it anyway. And this is something kind of fun. This is a Megatron. Megatron uh, squirt gun. I think it's pretty cool. I like the idea of it. Won't, won't be in the US. You can't get it here unless you import it. And if you import it, I'm sure they're going to make you put some sort of a red, uh, yellow, orange, no, orange tip to it. Like that was on the one that I used in my review a couple days ago for the Legends version in comparison to the G1. But there he is with nothing on it. Uh, it looks super awesome, Walter P38, just like Megatron, and there it is with everything all geared up and loose. The thing looks premium, and it's a squirt gun. It's a squirt gun. Now, I, I read something about it being an automatic squirt gun. Like, I guess this is a battery power. You pull the trigger and shoot it, but it's still really cool. Uh, doesn't really matter to me, though, because I'm probably not going to pay a ridiculous amount to import it, and you won't be able to buy it stateside, so a little disappointing in that fact. We got a Matrix Workshop upgrade kit for the M34. This is for RC. You give her a big old gun cannon if that's what you want. Or you can give her some smaller guns. And these smaller guns are different color guns. I gotta tell you, for some reason I got it stuck in my head that RC should have two of those black guns. Uh, I don't know why in my mind two of those guns is what I keep thinking. Somewhere in the lore, I saw some RC somewhere that had two guns like that. Thought it was really cool. Would really uh, go out of my way to probably get two of those myself if I could figure out a way to do it without having to buy two of these sets. But still, this little upgrade kit looks pretty cool. What looks really cool is this upgrade kit. Looking at this, this is a stand with a built-in LED. It's 3D printed and it looks really good once it's lit up. That looks super awesome, super premium, and it's for the Earthrise Quintesson. I like this. I like this a lot. So uh, I, I do have uh, the contact information if you want to order this, but I don't like the price. I, I got a little, uh, little disappointed when I saw that it's 22 pounds each and like $31 to ship it. So if you're going to buy uh, this, you probably want to pick it up in bulk pay for one shipping at one time uh, work out something with the seller so that you're not having to pay too much and also there is a LED wire for a USB so you'll need some sort of like a USB power drive or plug it into the wall or something like that to light it up and uh, so there's you have to figure out your power option on this a lot to think about if you're ordering this but if you do go through it you could replace the idea of having three masterpiece ones with just your earthrise ones for a much lower price at the end of the day all right before i get into talking about star wars stuff real quick i want to talk about gi joe classified and on the left there there is zartan and he does look pretty good he also comes with his alternate face and that headpiece comes off next to him we have the cobra viper now this viper actually will have a really shiny face i i did see uh one shot that it's real shiny that that uh hood or not hood but the helmet anyway that piece there is shiny and then we do have firefly firefly looks really stylized but he has the the definitely the right coloring to him but i'm not a huge fan of what they did with him with that big old vest and all that 
But uh, I'll be talking about all these things in a video coming up soon. Also, on the last one, the Infantry Trooper, which looks great. It looks a lot like the uh, Cobra Island one, except there's some modifications made to it so, to make it look more classic, more like the, the original vintage style trooper. Now, here's the thing. You can pre-order right now at BBTS. You can get Zartan and the Trooper, and there's no limit quantity. So you, if you want to get 20 Troopers, you can get them. They're like three bucks more. They're 23 apiece. But if you want to get 20 Troopers pre-ordered, you can go there and pre-order 20 Troopers. Uh, I, I don't know what's stopping them, and I'm sure that they can have the channel power to get as many as they want. Next up, we have the Retro line, which is really just a 20... 5th anniversary version. It's not really vintage stuff. So uh, we do have a roadblock on the left. Then we have uh, Scarlet. And then we have some other dude that I don't even know who this guy is that's flying the Fang. And the Fang is a modernized Fang, which uh, I'll have to make another video with all this stuff because I don't have much time. Destro. Uh, Destro looks pretty good. So that's what's coming up for the Walmart exclusive in the retro line. So where do we start with Star Wars? Well, we have the Razor Crest, and that's going to be the next... Uh, HasLab project. It's already funded. Working on hitting the first tier of 8,000 where you're going to get some sort of an escape pod. Here is the escape pod. So if you want to know more about this project and all my feelings and beliefs about this project, then you can watch my video that I made yesterday and check it out. But we've already unlocked, uh, or we're going to unlock this escape pod at 8,000. Who knows what we unlock at? 10,000? We've got a ton of stuff to go through real quick, and I'll go through it real fast. Okay, Vintage Collection, we're getting a Captain Rex, and I think he looks pretty good. Uh, we're also going to be getting a TIE Fighter Pilot, and that TIE Fighter Pilot also looks pretty good. We're going to be getting an Anakin, for whatever reason, with this poncho, and that looks like Anakin. And then we're going to get Phantom Menace stuff, clogs up pegs, man. Just, I, they've learned their lesson? Nope, they haven't. So we're getting a Queen Amidala. Uh, none of these are sold out, by the way, except Captain Rex. Captain Rex sold out right away. These are all available for pre-order still through Howard's World Pulse. And probably will indefinitely be available for pre-order. But anyway, uh, the, the Battle Droid's a good idea because it's an army builder. And I like the look of it. So uh, there we are with Vintage Collection. Not really anything to get excited about in Vintage Collection. Except for the Razor Crest, I guess. Black Series, we've got the Armorer, and that was up for pre-order for a little bit. Most of the Black Series stuff sold out. I believe pretty much all of it is sold out. But anyway, the Armorer for the Mandalorian, I, I know people are going to be really excited about that. Uh, Jar Jar Binks. Now, Jar Jar Binks like a deluxe figure. It was like 30, uh, I believe it was 30. But uh, anyway, Jar Jar Binks sold out pretty fast. Has this big old shield, and, and it's funny because they had like the exact names of the stuff. I was like, I didn't even know... All these other things had a name. I thought it was a shield and a weapon, but they had some specific names to them. We also have another Deluxe, a Deluxe Boba Fett. And uh, that's a $30 one, too. I was surprised to see that one to be $30. I was like, wow, that, that's expensive. I thought, you know, Boba Fett would be a $20 Boba Fett. Like, why is he $30? But he's got improved articulation and um, supposed to be a whole lot better than the other one. If you already have a Boba Fett, uh, is it worth the upgrade for another, you know, 30 bucks? Who knows? Uh... I don't really care for Rey that much uh, as a character, but I love the idea of the dark side Rey. And I think that the entire storyline, the whole movie, the whole thing would have been better if she did turn. I think that people would have loved it. Fans would have just, oh, I forgive all the flaws in all of the sequel trilogy for that one aspect. That's awesome. But it didn't happen. But this figure did sell out almost instantly. It sold out before I even knew it was up I, when I'm checking it for something. But I do want to give Hasbro props, uh, HasLab, uh, the, the pulse, because what they did is put the captchas up, uh, limits of one per person and all that stuff. They still sold out real fast. They also have these holiday figures, and I think there's five of them total. I didn't track down all the pictures because I don't care that much. But yeah, there's these pictures of the holiday troopers and... Uh, they're just repaints of existing figures. Now, here's the thing. They struggled to get this pushed through. Lucasfilm didn't want them to do it. Uh, nobody wanted them to do it at Hasbro. The design team, the creative team wanted to do it. So we'll see how big of a hit this is come January 1st, if they're still around. We got inbox pictures of 
uh, Cad Bane, and so that's awesome. That uh, figure's gonna be outstanding. Uh, that's definitely one of those uh, Clone Wars characters that was mean, rough, and tough, and we just don't see much of this guy anywhere in any iteration. And if you didn't get the chance to pick up the indoor set, or you didn't want to drop $110, here are the characters of that, minus the Ewok, so you don't get the Wicked in there just yet, but uh, here are the Luke indoor, Han indoor, uh, Leia indoor. Something's telling me that these will be the on the 40th anniversary card backs for like a re-release. So this will be the, the this is the second iteration of getting these. Third iteration, I bet you anything you'll get them on the vintage style card backs eventually for the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. And there's an Ahsoka Tano lightsaber. This thing looks pretty cool. It's a Force Effects Elite, and of course it's Elite. Now, there are a few things about this. You can change the color into three different colors. You can have it with blue, green, or yellow, I guess. And then you can also, uh, it shows the little crystal. You can have the crystal, uh, put it in or take it out and all that good stuff. So, uh, But it's, it was a $250, $300, something like that. A really expensive lightsaber. These lightsabers are charging a hefty, hefty price for them these days and outpricing the vast majority of collectors that would have bought them in the first place. So what do you think about this week's weekly news and review? I know it was a long one. There's a lot of information to cover. I didn't even go over everything. I just got the highlights. So much more. Uh, I'll probably roll a little bit into next week. But wow, big week, big Pulse Con. Trying to round it all up. I'm going to probably do a few smaller videos, like one about G.I. Joe and then some other stuff. Uh, probably do a Black Series one all on its own. Uh, but that probably will not be a pleasant video. I don't think uh, anybody that likes Black Series would really enjoy watching that video at all. But uh, I'm debating whether I even do it. Let me know what you think about this. Like, subscribe, tell your hanger out.